Welcome back to AFTV, everyone. Yes, you're going to have a very moody James. Um, if you're looking for some calm thoughts, insight, looking at the wider picture. No, I'm really annoyed. I'm really, really annoyed. Um, but we want to give you all the chance to have your say. Laurie, welcome to the show. I, know you've just I just want to say, man, I am not crying. Uh, like James, I'm more annoyed. I wouldn't even say angry because... Um, my head I'm not hurts. sure if I that what the, what I saw in the second half was worth me giving myself that anger. You know, what I mean, I'm just disillusioned with what I'm seeing. Is more of a better word, I think. Disillusioned and disappointed. Because I'm I, I'm sorry. really uh, no, that, that's rude of me. I interrupted you, but I'm so annoyed, Laurie. You know, right? I I'm a bigger picture looker, thinker. Right? I I, I will happily go. You know what? Champions League campaign, first year back in seven, eight years, whatever, quarter final for the first time in 14. We weren't disgraced by Bayern at all. We were not. We showed we're a good team. They respected us. We can go play. Like, there were things to be positive about. But you're left infuriated as a fan when you feel the players didn't leave it all out on that pitch yeah. now maybe across the season they have been leaving it all out there and so now what you're seeing is a very tired team out of ideas but the manager i think has got a lot wrong in this in the second half of these last two games i think the players there is something not right about them there is something was when I watched Liverpool in times of need, and by the way, you want to talk about tired? They've had their squad absolutely ripped apart. Mm. And they always look like they're leaving it all out there in terms of chances, sprinting, running. And I saw a team, I'm not really blaming them. I think it's coached into them. You know, be patient, play your way through, pass. You'll find the moment will come. But we lack a little bit of genius on the edge of the air. We lack a little bit of control in midfield. We lack a bit of experience. And I think we lack a manager who, and I love Arteta, and I think he's going to the top, and I think he's going to win things with us. I really believe it. Some people might think you're crazy for still thinking that. I think he will get there. And he, if he's not with us, he will get there as a manager. I believe that. But I think you saw Emery and Tuchel show their experience in these last two games. So we're going to talk about it. That's pretty much all I really want to say about it. I'm still really annoyed. It's going to be a bit of a venting sesh. But not so much for me. I want everyone to come. And if you want to have a proper conversation, give some clear thoughts, try calm me down, you're more than welcome. I could use it. Luckily, we've got Laurie, the wise Laurie, who always knows how to put things into perspective. But really, we just want you all to have your say. Look, as this comment says here, from ZTLOC, we didn't go out on our shield. No. We didn't. No. I, that, I, did, I did a fan cam, uh, and I believe the title of the fan cam was Out With A Whimper. I believe that to be the case. I think we had our limitations cruelly exposed today. I think, I think what we can safely say, if we're if we're being honest and we analyse our campaign, is that when it comes to the elites of Europe, we're not there yet. I think today, we, was that was demonstrated. I mean, mm. and it wasn't just tonight. If you look at the two games against Porto, we barely scraped over the line in those games. Yep, we agreed. had a couple of games in the group stages where we came up short and lost to Lons. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. Now, listen, um, we do have to be <sighs> realistic and say, listen, we've not been playing Champions League football that long. So maybe it was far-fetched to think that we can get to finals and win competitions when you've got the likes of City, Madrid and Bayern Munich and... Even PSG, I mean, look at PSG, the amount of money they've spent, the amount of players yeah, they've got, won, and they've, they've not won it So, in recent years. So maybe it was a little bit far-fetched of us to sit and think that, yeah, Arsenal are just going to enter the competition after a couple of seasons it's going there. I'm, but, I'm fine with us not winning it. I'm fine with us going out to European heritage and clubs that have been there and done it, especially with, with players like what Bayern have. I'm just not okay with the way we went out. Exactly, I was going to come on to that. What I yeah. was looking for in that second half was a bit of spark, was a bit of energy, was a bit of bravery. I wanted to see people calling for the ball. I wanted to see our wingers go past their man or try to. I wanted to see people have shots from outside of the box. I wanted to see, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get us on the edge of our seats. If we're going to go out, let's go out honourably, like you said, you know, on our shield. We didn't do that tonight, man. We just... No. Not at all. We just played it safe and uh, we lost 1-0. Let's get our first callers. Um, I have a feeling we have, may have Mans 
ready to chat to us, of course. Disappointed with what happened last week. Our mans will be joining us very soon. Let's go to Alex first. Alex, hey, how we doing? Hey, man, it's it's kind of like what Laurie said, just like feeling an apathy, you know, like just seeing my team come, our team come so close um, to just feel like take, we're going to take that next step. And then we just kind of bottle it every time, you know what I'm saying? So uh, a little frustrating. Uh, the main thing that just really kind of gets on my nerves is I can tell it's mentality. We've been here so many times. Um, well, not obviously not in the quarterfinals for a while. We're kind of fairly new in the Champions League. We um, haven't been strong in the Champions League for a while, but um, when, we, when we get chances in front of goal, um, there's just like no composure. Um, like Martinelli had that chance early on. Um, you have a seasoned, you know, player that's been in that position uh, many times. Uh, usually that's bottom corner, either side. Um, we don't pull the trigger when we need to. We just make the wrong decisions. Um, that last corner by Sokka doesn't even clear the first man. Yeah, that was, um, that kind of epitomized just, the night. It, yeah, it, it, it really is just mentality. Um, I think we have a good team, but we just don't have that it factor. We don't have that player that's been there and done it. And you need that player that's been there and done it. You need that to be one of your main stars. You need that to be one of your players that, you, you need that to be one of your guys that can just take the game by the scruff of the neck and just like, Dominate it, and we we don't have anybody. We don't have that difference maker on our team. And um, can I? Why well, I love Arteta, and I think that he's done a really great job. And I'm so grateful for where we are. Um, this next year, I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be asking serious questions. You know, I need we need to see that the investments there. We need to see that um, we're getting the right players. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just another frustrating night. <laughs> can I challenge you slightly, right? I think yeah. you're right about needing experience, but experience either comes at an insane cost or it comes, you know, with older players like Jorginho, for example. Absolutely. So, yeah. so while I hear you, I just don't know how attainable that player is. And that's not me sort of just trying to make excuses. I'm just saying when we say experience, or so what are we talking about? Vinicius? We're not getting him. De Bruyne, we're not getting yeah, him. No, that's true. Like so so who so Leroy Sane, what's it gonna cost you? So so then I look at City, right? And I know City had a very unique journey to getting where they got to. But Aguero, Silva, Nazri, yeah, it's you know, De Bruyne, they hadn't done it when they got to Man City. They were very good talents. They were coached for, not just by Pep Guardiola from the start, by various managers. I say all this to say that I think our problem is quality. If I'm really honest, and I know that there'll be people saying, oh, you, you gas these players, you gas these players. And, and like, sure, we do. When we're doing really well, we hype these players up. I've called Declan Rice world class, for example. I kind of stand by that. By the way, shout out to Saliba and Gabriel. I thought were brilliant tonight. But I think quality, Alex, is a problem for us. Who did you look at today and go, that player could win it for us? That player could pro that Nobody. he he Nobody. could provide he might do something, and Martinelli and Saka have proven their superb talents, but not quite there. Erdegaard, I think, is always better in the middle phase, not in the final phase. I think we need quality this summer. I think this summer is about yeah. being super ruthless and going Vieira, Smith Rowe, Inketia, Nelson, Havertz, because we signed you a year ago, we give you one more year as a squad player. But we've got to be ruthless and honest about quality. And I'm not trying to do a whole revisionism of the whole... I'm not trying to revise the whole squad off one 1-0 one defeat. But I just think we've learned that come April, quality tells and we don't have it. But I think as as yeah. you are right, um, you know, we could do with an influx of quality. And I mean, serious quality, may I say, yeah, like yeah. elite quality. But that being said, did we really, I mean, you saw Dortmund yesterday and, and Atletico Madrid and PSG and Barca, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't see both of those games for the whole entirety, but the, the, the I saw like, highlights of those games and what I did see even apart from the goals was players going for it tonight we didn't do that right. enough you're right we didn't do that no. enough. I, I can right. accept losing like you said James if you go out on your shield tonight because let's be honest yeah 
I don't think we were favourites to win the Champions League anyway. To me, our bread and butter is the Premier League. That was our main focus, yeah? The, the Champions League was an additional bonus, um, something that, as, as fans, we embraced. But even so, go out there tonight and leave it out there, man. You know what I mean? Try it. He's right. Yeah. How many times did you see um, Saka and Martinelli try to go past their man, especially in the second half? How many times did you see them... So I'm pick up the ball, look up and say, right, I'm going to have a go here. How many times did you see make players making lung bursting runs to get in the box? I didn't really see that. Yeah. We uh, was typically in the round. They're scared. Say they're football. scared. They've never been they've never been here before, you know? It's um there's those players that, you know, obviously Mbappe, he's like insane, like he's an alien, you know? Um, but like there's those players when it matters, like the truly world class players will do it on every stage. It's not mm. just gonna be across like that's or whatever true. Premier League game against Brighton, like they'll show up when it really counts. And I just we don't we don't have any of those, we don't have players of that quality. You know, we might have to go out and get um Yakaris from um, uh, Sporting Lisbon. Um, hopefully, you know, he can add some clinical edge because we don't have any killers. Um, we for a while I feel like we've always just been a soft touch. I think we've gotten a lot better on that under Arteta. Like so, do, White, do we do like we do we? Um, sorry to interrupt, caller, but I, I do I do want to make this point. Should we be including the manager in that then? Because, like, let's be honest, man. He's the one that sets I the tempo. So. He sets the tone. Did he go for it? I didn't see him um, ah, making it, those changes early enough. I didn't see him. New, did, you, know? you know? Yeah. I didn't see anything different or new. No, I didn't. Um, I mean, because when they scored their goal, it was kind of, to be honest, I kind of felt like, obviously, they hit the post and whatnot, but I feel, I feel like at times we were kind of in the ascendancy, especially in the first half. Um, we had chances, but um, yeah, we need to be more adaptable. Um, we're we're too nice, we're too cute with the ball. Um, always trying to keep possession, but possession only gets you so far. Um, and you see, like all Kimmich needed, he needed that one little chance, and that was it, um, really. So yeah, I, I do, I do really appreciate the manager, and I like his system, but we we definitely need we definitely need to question him we need to start we need we, we need do. to start being a little we more do. critical i think as a, as fans like um but constructive criticism not like um not like no oh, no listen I, i'm like, not going to be one of those tonight that's calling for his head yeah. far from it listen the yeah. guy's done he's done a good job so far but exactly you know, like yeah. you said caller um you know it's about time now that we question certain things openly yep. yeah, yeah absolutely it is what it is alex it's been a pleasure mate thank you thank you for joining us thank you so much guys speak thank soon you. thanks for the call uh, i'm going guys all right apparently apparently modric and silva have just missed penalties in the uh man city real madrid game so we'll keep an eye on that modric and silva yeah both modric and bernardo silva oh right yeah have, one each, missed penalties yeah. uh we've got super chat from straw hatter to my fellow arsenal fans tough place but imagine what our captain and squad feel like let's stick together we are the arsenal we've been a lot worse it only makes us stronger it's not the end of the world of course not the end of the world but of course yeah, yeah there's room for that mans 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 how hi, are we, hi james hi laurie hi how are you doing take it away i'm not even gonna ask a question take it away <laughs> bunch of cowards that's well, all I can say. It I, felt cowardly, didn't it? Bunch of cowards. I, I'm done with them as well. You know, I'm. When we lost to Villa, and I came here, and I'm, and I, I tried to be really supportive as much as as it hurt. I was saying, you know, we, we've got the Bayern game midweek, and that might be a good time to play Bayern because we can get our confidence back if we go through, which we should do. And we just we don't use we don't use the opportunity, and why? Because this team is petrified of success. They're petrified of being successful. They're petrified of winning a trophy. They they collapse at the same moment every single year. First year was for top four, then it was for the league, and now again for the league. Look, we might win the league still this season. Two points, six games to go. Two points is not a, a difference that is impossible to make up. Mm. It's just do you believe in it I, you probably don't and the re and that's the, the only reason for that the reason for that is not just because man city are the ones who are ahead and they have the tendency to go on a run you don't believe in it because you probably don't believe arsenal can do it because you know how we are we're not mentality monsters we're the opposite we're weak weak players but man's, but and man's. i think that's that's and I actually think that stems from the manager as well. Right. Thank unfortunately. you. Unfortunately. Thank you. So I was going to get to this. 
Now, before people think I'm being uh, reactionary, we've lost the game and now I'm turning on Arteta, it's not that at all. I would give him another summer and I'd give him another big budget to try and add to this squad because he's got us so far. But I actually kind of agree with you that this is not just Arsenal gassing out. This is not just an inexperienced group who aren't sure how to get over the line. Because when I look at the way we started the Villa game and the way we started this game tonight, they didn't. that didn't show nerves. And nerves normally show before. Not, they show going into the game. You know, first touches are heavy or loose or whatever. Or, or, or you, you, you drop the ball with your tactical plan. I actually think what's happened is these games and first halves haven't gone quite the way we want against Villa and Bayern. I actually include the one at the Emirates. And our asses have fallen out. And Arteta hasn't been proactive enough. And because he hasn't been proactive enough, he's been quite reactive. And he's gone to his go-to changes. All right, Trossard for Martinelli. Why is it always Martinelli? Why is it always Martinelli? He didn't have a good game, but did Saka? Did Kai Havertz? Why does Havertz always stay on that pitch? Jorginho didn't start on the weekend. Why could he have not played a full no 90? Idea. Jorginho was our no best idea, midfielder man. today. Jorginho was our best midfielder. You turned to Zinni where we needed a goal at the Emirates. It worked. You've started against Villa, but you don't take him off when it's not working. And then actually we arguably needed him again for a little bit of magic or something today and you don't use him. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. And for me, Arteta has lost his nerve in the last two, three games. He started the game against Bayern Munich with Kivior and White steaming up the pitch as wingbacks. When have we, when recently have we played with them as major wingbacks? They've got up and down every now and again, but normally they tuck in, they're quite reserved, they keep their shape. So I just had to get that out there because... I think there is a lot of tangible evidence for Arteta getting this really wrong the last few games, man. He, get, he gets it wrong, but he gets it wrong because he's an emotional guy himself. He has the tendency to overthink. I think Real Madrid just went through. Real Madrid. Um, so, I mean, can I say, I mean, City have thrown it away as well then. I will say, I mean, Real Madrid are brilliant, but I think both yeah, English sides are yeah, very well, disappointed with the side that we so. played today. The side that we played today, That James, doesn't make me feel better. Every single time I've... Yeah, the, the, every time I've seen them play this season, they've struggled. Every time. And I've seen them play quite a lot this season. They've even struggled against Man United. And the only time they didn't struggle was against us in, two, in those two games. Why is that? All the reasons you've just listed and all the reasons I've just listed, it all comes down to mentality. I think we're a better team than Bayern Munich. When we play our best football, I think this season we are a better team. Just like I think Barcelona are a better team than PSG. But because they got a red card, the game turned around. Mm. But Actually, on, on that card, Champions no? League thing as well, I actually think that's not good news for Arsenal City going out now. I really think. Because yeah, exactly. what, they're going to become a very wounded animal now. Because the, the league is... Yeah. I don't actually think it knocks their confidence. Last season, going through all these competitions and rounds galvanised them and they had the momentum to keep going. So I, I actually think it's a good thing. But I'm not even out, focusing on them. I'm not I agree. Even, I'm not even like... I agree. I'm not even focusing on... I don't believe in Arsenal Football Club. I don't believe in this team. I wouldn't be surprised if we went and lost to Wolves. If we beat Wolves, I wouldn't be surprised if we went and drew or lost to Chelsea at home. I just don't believe in the slot anymore. They're emotionally fragile. They're not champions in their minds. You don't have to win the Champions League or the Premier League to have the winner mentality. You don't. But man, what, sta- what stage is what what shape, what stage is Xabi Alonso on? He's just won the league with Bayer Leverkusen in his first season. What what phase is he on? But man, so I, I know we've cut you a lot in this, and I'm really sorry because you've actually had to put up with me and Laurie being quite rude. So I'm very sorry. But you, you said you've lost no, belief. No, 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 no problem. You, you, you said you've lost belief in this team. What do you mean by that? Because I can say, I think I can say with my chest, I've lost belief that this team is ready to get over the line, where I did think a few months back they were. Um, but I haven't lost belief in this I mean team the exact getting same there. Thing, James. Okay. But the, I, I think they can the get there. Like, I think Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel are of the level to get over the line one day. I believe Erdegaard is of the level and Rice is of the level and talent to get over the line one day. Saka as well. So have you lost faith in actually whether this group has the potential to get there? James, uh, I don't want to wait for that one day anymore. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to wait for it. I don't trust these players to get over the line. 
What I mean by that is, what I mean by that is, I don't think we'll win the league this season and next season. They can go up to West Ham, go up to Burnley, win ten nil for all I care, and I'll never trust them again until I see them lift that trophy. Wow. And I don't think I'll see them lift that trophy until we buy a few other players and sell a few of these. I don't, I don't mean sell the whole squad because I think we've got a ver some very good players in the squad. I'm privileged to wa watch players like Martin Odegaard, who I think was outstanding again. He's had an outstanding season. The, the person who's trying to set example every time he's on the ball, that's him. The complete opposite, Bukayo Saka. I'm sick of him. I don't understand why we cannot criticize Bukayo Saka at this football club. Why? He because help. he's an academy player. He does nothing. Look at that corner. That was a disgrace. He shouldn't play one game until the end of the season just for that corner alone. Yeah, the, the head is lost right now. I'm and I'm mean, performance. The second half was uh, shocking. Uh, look, I I agree, man. You've had to you've had to put up with uh, me and Laurie butting in a lot, so I appreciate that a lot. But no, no, thank no, no you. worries, no worries. Thank I appreciate your opinion. So. No, and thank you for your unfiltered thoughts as always. Being honest, and um, look, it's a difficult. I'll give I'll give Man some credit as well because I spoke to him on uh, at the weekend after we lost to Villa, and he was quite measured. So to see him as he is now, he's genuinely upset and hurt. And I can see that. So fair play because he could have gone after the team. Well, we got, we like got nothing to be happy about on Sunday, and he didn't. So well, yeah, I man. Thank you. Guys. you. Yeah, nice. We appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Speak soon, my friend. Let's get Ahmed in. Ahmed, man. Hey Difficult. guys, can you hear me? Yep. Can hear you loud and clear, my friend. Um, what, what do you want to talk about? What's at the forefront of your mind coming out of that? Oh, he's gone. Fair enough. Um, let's get some super chats in then while we Danish get uh, our like cooler our back. Rui says, the problem is not in losing, but how we lost. No yep, fight at all. That. No uh, zeal. Zeal. In players, tired of seeing this defending attitude all the time. Would have preferred scoring and losing, at least trying. Uh, Nathan Piper Sends in a super chat as well. Thank you. O'Malley says, my issue is we aren't winning anything at the moment. Not even a League Cup. O'Malley, I said on, I was on Football Culture Movement on the uh, weekend with uh, Mayo and um, Fuad. And they asked me like, what, like, you know, if you throw it away, blah, blah, blah. What do you think it is? And I said to them, I said, this might be so rogue, so random, such an off topic way to approach that question. But I feel our exits from the Cups are unacceptable and they have an underlying impact on our season where this team needs to win silverware mm. why do we think we're too good for these competitions yeah, yeah. why why do you think a Carabao so, Cup and an uh, FA Cup uh, you, we're you above that go back in for some of my fan comes what? I've said that I've argued with my brother very vociferously about our seeming arrogant attitude towards some of the domestic cups and um, listen if we go to the to the end of the season, come out empty-handed. It's not going to be a good look. I tell you why, Lord, because be because look. two things can exist at once. It is not, and I don't care how angry I am. I'll still say this: it is not a disgrace not to win the Champions League because you were knocked out by Bayern Munich, not to win the Premier League because you were beaten by Man City. It is not a disgrace for that to happen. That is that can totally happen to a younger team that we can still see lacks quality and a young manager who, albeit he's been in the job for this next season will be his fifth full season, but we can see his learning and he's getting better every year. That I can I can happily say. But what is not you're entering into the unacceptable category is four full seasons, not just without a trophy, without coming close. And the reason I say not coming close is don't tell me last year's second place in the title was close. The way we fell away, not good enough. Well, the exits at we cup competitions. To the, to the, yeah, I think the best we can look at is a semi-final of the Europa League against Villarreal, went out poorly in that, and a semi-final of the Carabao Cup to Liverpool, went out at home, having drawn nil-nil away. So our overall performance in competitions over four seasons hasn't been good enough, though some things you can understand, some are explainable, whatever. But the other thing that again still is part of the whole you can lose a title to City you can get knocked out by Bayern what isn't is to go third straight season where last season out of 30 points do you remember how many we got in the last how many points out of 30 we got in the last 10 games of last season 15 season before that 
15 again. Wow. So we picked up half the points in the running that were available to us. We cannot and go is, a third why, season in a row doing that. We're getting labelled as bottlers, even though I, you know, I think it's more nuanced than that. Yeah. But people will say, look, when it gets to the crunch, the business end, you guys start to fall apart. And yeah. um, you can't really argue with that too much. But Let's hey. get our next caller in. I'm going to ask them about that, the trophies. Who've got Zach? How's it going? Zach, good. Sorry, side <laughs> delay on our end, but good to see you, mate. Um, I'm going to ask you about yes. what I've just been ranting about there. The the flimsy exit of other cup competitions and four full seasons without a trophy. Like I said, I can acknowledge not winning the big ones. But do you think this kind of apathy we have to going out of other competitions ultimately has a negative effect on this group? I think it does. It, it, it definitely has an impact because as we saw last year with City, uh, and they said it themselves, having a game every three days really... Uh, it impacted them positively and really had a way for them to push forward. So not having that definitely sucks, but I still think this team and this project is still at least one year away from actually being able to uh, contend for trophies. Have you always felt that way? In my opinion, in my opinion, uh, the second half against Aston Villa and today uh, we just had weak legs, tired legs. And that's from Mikel not trusting some people on the team. And I'm not just talking about Emil or Reese Nelson, but there's other players too who are on the roster for what I would say, quote unquote, uh, like locker room influences, who I think will not be here next summer and we will bring in and, or we will bring in new players and that kind of, uh, and the players that will be brought in will be a uh, higher quality. And so that rotation will help because I think the 11 that we had today had a chance to win, but because that 11 has played 15 games in 16 weeks or whatever, you know, or 15 games in, you know, seven weeks, it, it's just too much. Like the uh, fi mat or fixture fatigue has set in on this club. I hear it. I hear it, Zach, but but I take, go all the way back to October. I was ask, arguing with Robbie about this. Bakai Saka playing through injuries. You could see it. He was coming off in games. He'd start the next one. Coming off, starting the next one. You know, months after Reese Nelson signed a new deal, when Gabby Jesus could have played out on the right, albeit he's had injuries. You know, Trossard in and out. Martinelli in and out. Vieira, okay, he's had injuries, but could have been used a little bit more. Jorginho, took a while for him to get him in the team. And now he's using him weirdly too. Kivial's been a part of the squad for a while. But Tommy asked you, like, the management of the squad hasn't been good enough. It just fundamentally hasn't. Ben White, you know, coming off, did he play a full 90 against Luton, but didn't, but came off against Villa? It should have been the other way around. Yeah. He scored, his use of the squad is not great, Artetas. I can give him so much credit for so much stuff, but it, he's not good at rotating. We saw this in October. The, the, no, I agreed. The lack of squad rotation is something that I've been, you know, in it. Yeah. I've been banging on about that from time. I said that the rotation is not good enough. The in-game management with the subs is not good enough. It always seems to be the same guys, as James said earlier. It's like for like. It lacks innovation. It lacks thought. Um, and again, we saw that tonight. Uh, and, um, you know, we're here criticising the players and saying they didn't show enough bravery and stuff like that. But... You've got to be honest and say the manager has to be called out for that too because he wasn't brave in his substitutions. He wasn't brave in his, the way he approached the game tactically in that second half. Um, and the game was diminishing before our very eyes and he did very little to stop it from doing so. So I've got to call him out for that, man. We have to. He, he yeah. will, if we don't call him out for that, he will continue to make these mistakes. Zach, carry on with what we were just saying about the squad there though because I'd love I to know your thoughts on that. I agree, but no, uh, I've said multiple times throughout the season that Mikel has not rotated properly, in my opinion, uh, or at least put trust in players that he's they've, him and Edu have given contracts to. So I find that suspect. However, I still think there's going to be some big signings this year. I, I really think we're going to bring in an attacking midfielder and somebody who a striker who has a killer instinct because that is something that we have been lacking and it showed in the Villa game this weekend and it showed tonight. We need somebody to take that chance. 
Bukayo had a had a shot, and I don't know if it's the team instructions, but they don't take any shots outside of the box. They don't. Even, even if it's a low chance shot, it still has a chance to go in. And we we really have a luxury to look at Man City to see how they play and how they do things because it gives us something to aspire to. And mm. I think there's things that we can learn from them. And taking shots outside of the box is one of those things. I Absolutely. Agree. You see, the thing with Mikel Arteta that I've been saying as well for a while is, and I know that I might come across as slightly going for his head, bashing him a little bit, but I think it's necessary to make this point. My, my problem with him is that plan A, when it works, fine, yeah? He's a very meticulous, diligent type of guy. He's got his plan A, and most of the time, you have to say it works well because you've know, been near the top or top of the table for most of the season. Yeah. My, my Where I have an issue with him is, is that when plan A is not working, he doesn't show enough dexterity, he doesn't show enough lateral thinking, he doesn't show enough smarts to say, okay, plan A is not working, but you know what? Let me rejig, let me do things a little bit different and see how that goes. It's almost like he will look at the guys on the bench and just conclude that they're not good enough. But then like you said, Caller, you are the one, you and Edu and the likes, just giving these guys extended contracts and more money. So the fans, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not trying to hear that, yeah, but... Eddie's not good enough, blah, because you gave him a, an extended contract. Zach, we are actually going to yeah. have to drop you out. I'm so sorry, because you've, you've actually been frozen for of the course. last two, three minutes. Oh, um, sorry. It's not your fault at all. But we, we enjoyed the conversation, <laughs> so we kept it going. Um, but look, pleasure to chat to you. And um, yeah, yeah we'll, definitely, we'll, we'll definitely get you back. We'll pick up on that, because as we get our next okay. caller in, I just want to read this tweet from um, Alex, who you'll know from the different knock. He tweeted, I love Arteta, but every season we end up with only 13 to 14 players he actually trusts. Every summer we sign three to four guys to make it that first 16, 17, then end up alienating another three to four. Look at the players this evening. Absolutely gassed out. We need to find a way to sort this. I couldn't agree more. Let's get our next caller to discuss Arteta's use of the squad. Hey, Sean. Yeah. Hi, I, hey, I, how you doing? Hear me? Yes, welcome, welcome. Fine, thank you. Well, let me ask you about um, the gassing out of the team, getting tired. Is that just? I, I think I don't think it's an. It's not an excuse because we've got a squad and we've got, you know, everyone else is playing a lot of football as well. But do you think the team are tiring mentally, physically? I think the team is tired physically. Actually, um, I watch a lot of, I just want to say this, I watch a lot of um, tactical insights. Thank you and, so um, much. And I enjoy, you know, that show a lot. Whenever I'm driving to work in the morning, that's the thing I, I listen to first thing in the morning over here in the United States. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. And then Laurie, I, I like the way Laurie analyzes, um, you know, the game as well. So um, nice Thank to you, finally bro. speak with you guys. Appreciate that. Um, you know, the, you're welcome. The players gassing out is actually one of the points I had jotted down today. Um, I, I think the coach and the players, they're very inexperienced and it shows in these matches, in these games. Um, the, we, we lack a difference maker. We don't have that player. We don't have that player that, you know, we, I think back to when we had Thierry Henry, you know, even if we won't go behind or, you know, we're looking to go, go to qualify or to do something in a game, we know at any point, you know, you're looking and you're like, Thierry, come on, what's up, what's going on? You know, we need you. But right now we have no one of that quality in the in the team. And as well, you know, we I don't know what it is with Ateta. He doesn't play players into form. It's like he has his favorite players and then yeah. once you fall out with him, he doesn't play you anymore. I don't understand why Pate can't get a game. I mean, we had he had he had um what's his name? He had Jorginho chasing um Musiala, like Shadow Maki Musiala all over the pitch and he doesn't have the legs. And we had the defend the centre backs on the ball, looking to play, you know, line breaking passes, and they're just passing sideways, slow and sideways passes. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody in the middle that can hold on to the ball and dictate play. We lack that player that can replicate what Od Odegaard does on the right side, on the left side. We don't have that kind of player. And before the game, um, Tuku actually said it. He said, you know, we. 
you know, you said we all our actions are on the right side. You know, that that right right hand side of the of our you know of our lineup. You know, where Saka, White, and Odegaard is. That's the only place where we try to create something. When I was watching the game and I noticed, it's like Gabriel gets the ball and he refuses to pass to um, Tomiyasu or to Martinelli. They are always constantly looking to pass the ball to the right hand side. And there's no, they, they, they've already marked everybody off because they know that's what we're trying to do. It's like, you know, they know what we're trying to do before we even do it. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for a goal. Uh, the um, Ateta took off the midfielders and he put on the, the, he put on strikers. He put on Eddie, he put on Trossard. But still, we don't have the ball. So there's no way for the ball to get to the strikers. I don't understand it. It's, it's so sad. And Why not only that, he's, brought on, he's brought on dropped. Eddie with about six minutes to go. I mean, come on, bro. That's not... No, I agree. Can I say, I agree yeah. with what exactly. you're saying, right? Because I'll say my fire cam, you have to earn the right to play. So first half, Chorginho wants the ball off the centre-backs. Rice is there supporting. Erdogan er, er, comes. You've got all three midfielders getting on the ball in some way, shape or form. Then Saka comes inside a little bit. You might get some support from Havertz. So the reason you've got Bayern Munich back is because you have earned the right to play and you force them there. The minute... He does this thing where he plays players in positions where they're very isolated, but they're not going to benefit from being isolated. Now, some players go, I want to be on my own. Give me the ball and I'm going to attack the fullback or I'm going to run into that space. Jamie Vardy didn't need players around him. He just needed the space over there. Arsenal, Trossard, out on the left. He needs players around him. And you've got Tommy Asu, a centre-back, and you've got Havertz, who's wandering God knows where. And then you've got Havertz, who you drop him into midfield, but you haven't. You've gone 4-4-2, because he's actually still hanging up the pitch. So we haven't earned the right to play to get into those positions, because we can't even get the ball to those players. Now, if the ball had gone long to Jesus and he flicked it on, maybe Kai Havertz makes a good run and gets, a, gets an effort on goal. But we have to earn the right to do that. You've got to, or you're hoping for a moment of magic, which is one in one in twenty, one in fifty. So I agree. We we just didn't earn the right to play. Yeah, the problem with that is with there's no when when we play. It makes it makes I I can't even imagine I'm saying this, but it makes me miss Shaka because what Shaka has is he has football brain and he knows how to get into space to receive the ball. Yes, and keep it moving. He knows how to give forward you know line breaking passes but Albert can't do that the only thing he does is to run into space so when we have the ball it's like we're playing with one man shot in midfield because he's, he's hiding he doesn't want the ball they don't even want to give him the ball in certain areas on the pitch because they know it's coming backwards or they, they'll take the ball off him so we're constantly looking to you know pass the ball sideways 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 and try to give Odegaard to go to Saka but they know that's what we're trying to do yeah. I was expecting um, Ateta to drop uh, probably Odegaard, you know, in between the central midfielders or Jorginho come in between central midfielders and split the centre-backs so you can dictate and progress the ball from there. That was what I was expecting, but it was just, we, we just, all our possession was in our own half. We never had a sustained possession in their half, you know, trying to pin them back and trying to create chances and waiting for them to lose the ball and then we attack again. Most of our possession was Saliba, Gabriel and uh, White on the ball. And lastly, the point I, I have as well is, you know, White. I think most of our players are knackered. Saka is knackered. White is knackered. Um, who else? Rice is tired as well. If you remember the game against Newcastle, that's, you know, um, White refused to close down. Um, I don't know who he was. He yeah, yeah. the ball we'll and then go. He did the same thing today as well. Just close the guy down. That's so simple, but it's it so sluggy sometimes. When you watch him, it's like, you know, I know that's the style of play, but, you know, just close down and, you know, stop that cross. That's it. You know he's a left footer. Just cover his left foot. You know, that goal don't happen if you close down quickly. But yeah. he does this thing and, you know, takes his time and just, you know, lazy blocking down and the guy cross the ball and go, bang. That's it. No, I definitely think if, tiredness if we, is a. I definitely think tiredness is a factor. I, I definitely think tiredness. But is, is it a physical it, tiredness or a mental if tiredness? You don't, if yeah. we don't rest players against Wolves, we're going to draw or lose that game as well. There's no way we're going to play that game and you continue playing the same players over and over again without giving them a rest. They they look leggy. They look you know knackered. They look you know they they clueless. You know once the information that Ateta gives them, it's not working. 
I don't think they have the freedom on the pitch yep. to, you know, find solutions on their own and create something out of nothing. I think. No, I hear it. I hear That's it, just... mate. You've been a fa- you've been a fantastic call. Actually, I really enjoyed your thoughts. We're going to touch on some of it on tactical insight tomorrow with Graham. So thank you for joining, man, and do call back again. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much, guys. Thank you. Nice working with you guys. Lovely, lovely speaking to you. Who's next to join us? Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm all right. You? Yeah, gutted, angry, frustrated. Uh, feeling lacking in football hope. Where are you? Where are you? Are you angry at the players, the manager? Are you just disappointed? Are you sad for them? I'm just, I'm a bit deflated, frustrated, irritated, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I feel like in this fan call, we're all really calling from not a position of a surprise. I think we've all kind of expected it. At least I do. I can't speak for others, but. I just feel like we we are we don't have the experience yet. If you look at the other teams, they can pull all put something out of the bag. You know, uh, we we it feels like we are such a systematic uh, team that we we never have the ball just drop for us like City does, and we never shoot from outside the box. It's like it's being sold by the players that we never shoot from outside the box. I mean, Odegaard and and Odegaard shoot once; it was almost a goal, and Guardiola banks it in from outside the box. Those goals you need to get through, and I just don't feel like we've got any experience in that case. So maybe in the next years we can do anything, but right now I think so many teams are just better than us in Europe. If you had to look, if you had to give it one thing, I'm not saying it's it's a multiple things, but if there's one thing you think has cost us potentially the Premier League, of course, is still a lot to play for, and certainly the Champions League now. Is it technical quality? Is it experience? Is it tactical? Is it just youth? Like, what is it? What What is the main thing? Why do Arsenal keep getting to this point of the season and throwing it away? City. No, I think um, I think City plays a big part as well. If, if we just play well, Man City, for the they, season, their relentlessness. You mean? Cha- Sorry. Their, you mean City's relentlessness? Is that what you mean? Yeah, and, and if we play like this and we win the games we won now, we, we, we draw we drew against Liverpool and against City, we are champions, but this season is just insane. And City are now out of the Champions League, so I don't really know how that's going to go in the league. Maybe, as you said, they get uh, they excited even more for the league. But if I had to say and give it one thing, I think it's a lack of experience and I think it's um, no rest at all but then again you can't really give an excuse to that because Villa played on the Thursday and still beat us at home and you just have to win those games I just I just feel like with us there is no plan B and our players just want to pass it and so we have that last pass for a tap in like we never just shoot and and in the Champions League as well as you saw this evening as well there is just if you look at Odegaard, when Odegaard went down, I was like, yeah, this is it. Because we have no replacement for Odegaard. Who are you going to throw in? Smith Rowe barely played the game. And Saka has no replacement at all. I mean, if you look, you could buy DAB, but we just don't buy any players. It seems like Arteta is only really looking to upgrade our defense. That's just the main thing for me, I think. And I think in there you've touched on, you've not really said the words, but you're touching on squad management. You yes. Know, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of anger towards Bakaya Saka. I just can't bring myself to be angry at him. I can't. Now, that's uh, not to say he couldn't it, do better. Should have done way better. But this guy has played time and time and time again through injuries. Yeah. You know, full 90s. He gets kicked all the time. And he's been a regular in this team since the age of 18. And Mikel yeah. Arteta has fundamentally refused to buy a player that can play in his position. And that might sound strong, but he got Trossard for 27 million who could play in Martinelli's position. By the way, he's not actually like for like enough. He spent 65 million on Kai Havertz. He spent 35 million on Fabio Vieira and we also had Smith Rowe. He has refused like to to manage that position better. He's not even really given Reese Nelson a run to see if against teams in, I don't know, 15th and below, he's worth playing. He's always put Bakaya Saka through it. I mean, when are we going to see Fabio Vieira in an Arsenal show? I mean, when was the last time he actually played? You know what I mean? Reese Nelson, guys like this. I mean, Smith Rowe. Jesus on the right. Anyone think of that? Could Jesus play on the right and then maybe... Listen, don't get me started. I, I think for me, Corlo, what was so disappointing about tonight was 
you touched on it and I mentioned it already, the lack of a plan B. But putting all that aside for one second, I always feel in sports, right, that there is a way to lose. Now, you, you go up against Bayern Munich, someone's got to win and someone's got to lose tonight, yeah? But if we're going to lose, I wanted it to be whereby we're giving it a good go and we can come off that pitch tonight saying, you know what, we give it everything, but we just fell short at the end. We go again on yes. Saturday against World. But I can't say that tonight because, no. okay, you can say that the players are tired. Was it physical tiredness? Was it a mental tiredness? But our approach in that second half for me was just, we didn't really show any real belief, conviction. The intensity was down. I think some the stat shows that. I think we had something like three shots on goal in the second half. None of them was on target. It's just not, it's just yeah. not good enough. It's just not. It, it feels like it feels like our fans sometimes want it more than our players itself. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I also find the situation in the striker position is a bit weird. I think it, Arteta, I, I don't know what the tactics are, of course, but Arteta has Harvard to the side, but still we keep on crossing into the area. And I think if there's no striker, then what's the point of that? And yeah, I... I I don't know. I'm just. And the old it's a big, it's a big is starting to become a bit of an albatross over his neck because what I've noticed, and I've been saying this for a few weeks now, he refuses to drop habits or take him off. Like James yeah. was making the point, okay, if he's not doing it up top, why are you putting him back in midfield when we've already seen in previous weeks it's not working? Mm. Bench him, get him off, get somebody in there that you feel can do the job or at least gives them an opportunity to show what they got. Don't but, just keep yeah. doing but, the same thing all the time. Yeah. Final point, mate. Sorry, no, give us go, give us that final point and then we'll we'll get well, the next caller in. I just wanna to touch on what Laura said. I mean, there is not really any replacement for Harvards there. I mean Arteta did choose to buy Harvards and not any other striker. Yeah, you could re- stretch it out to the to the summer and buy a player like Jokeris. But there would you wanna put that? Asus, I mean you saw he actually the uh, airplane that ball over the goal uh, in that one v one against Noya. Noya actually played a really good game to be honest, but it's just we don't have any replacement. Saka gets no rest at all, like no rest. It doesn't matter if he's injured or not. Although he, he just plays him. That's what I'm talking about. There's, there's just mm. it's just I think the players need to get more rest, and that's I think that's yeah. a necessity. Well, another big summer of squad filling. But anyway, mate, the first time we've spoken, so absolute pleasure to have you on. Yeah. So uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, well, for joining us, I mean, Thanks, and giving us your call. thoughts. So thank you. And our final caller to round things off is, how are you doing? Oh, we've got no audio. We can't hear you. Don't know if that's coming through on your end. Uh, can you hear us? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Welcome. How yeah, are you doing? I was going to say, how are you guys? But that's a rhetorical question because we're all so bummed. I'm very much looking forward to my McDonald's. <laughs> I need to eat my pain away and watch trash TV. Likewise, likewise. Um, yeah, I have so many swirling thoughts, but uh, yeah, a lot of them have been covered by some of the callers. Um, I wouldn't lay today's defeat at the feet of team selection. I would do so. Uh, I would pin it to uh, second half tactics, uh, lack of adaptability, very rigid. And also um, squad, oh, management, uh, squad management, squad uh, management. I think the degree uh, to which the, his utilization of the squad has varied is a bit too much for my liking. Um, persisting with certain players and then as we can see, they were bone weary after the game um, and then not utilizing, uh, you know, we have uh, a reimagined English quartet or the you know the English project with Nelson Smithrow. Uh, if you want to bundle in Ramsdale in, in, into that as well, but um, none of them have um, earned the faith of Arteta, and as a result, we have Saka, who's played day in day out. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say things like flat track bully and stat padding, but I look at the eye test and. Pretty much the entire year, he's looked uh, out of sorts. And I think maybe that's because of his injuries. Um, I also think Raya is uh, not the the answer that we're looking for. I think he overcompensates his jitteriness by coming out. In fact, there was that one moment where he just struck it out when he didn't need to. And then Gabriel 
um, got you know seemed to have got the back pass wrong, but that was um, I think uh, Raya who should have uh, stood his ground. Um, I think Jorginho, honestly, we talk about him not having the legs, but I think that with Rice next to him, um, he you know he's covered. But what he does add is that creative outlet. He has that incisive through ball, and I don't think Jorginho should have been uh, taken off in the second half at all. Um, I think. Havertz does add physicality uh, to the midfield, but I don't think that's what we needed um, at the time. Uh, we needed him to be uh, making his darting runs into the box and add a physical presence in the box. So I think Jorginho should have stayed on and I think Havertz uh, should have been continued to playing um, up top. I think we lack a big, uh, we lack a gunman, we lack cover for Saka. Um, I think Partey is going to go in the summer. There's talks about Jorginho going back to Italy. So I think we need um, another six and we need Rice to be the eight next season. Um, I think that's where um, we have a, a much more thriving, robust system. Sorry, am I... Am I s- no, 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 carry no. on, man. You, you, you're saying every, you, you are saying so much that I agree with, but can I say the thing that you, you would have heard me clapping at the beginning? Yeah. It was when you said the problem isn't so much with the 11 you went out with and actually how we started these games against Bayern, against Villa. Because quite frankly, I think it's maybe a bit too agenda driven to go, oh, we were horrible the whole game for both games. No, like the first half against Bayern was okay. There were positives. First half against Villa was really good. But the game and the manager's job doesn't stop on the training field. It doesn't stop at the announcement of the eleven. It's throughout the game. It's constantly managing and working things out and recognising that there's Thomas Tuchel and Unai Emery, two very good managers who have been around the block, who have won European competitions, who have done it with multiple clubs. Arteta's only got the one, who are going, ah, I've seen the situation before. And Arteta never once reacted, probably because he was so encouraged that plan A was working before, but then it wasn't. So what have you got for me next, Mikel? And I think you were right about that. I think making the point that the tactics and management in the second half, as well as gassing out and the squad management throughout the season is all being a massive part. But I, I really think Arteta can take some serious blame for how these second halves have really got away from us far too much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100%. Uh, you know, I, I see Isak against Spurs uh, over the weekend and I just feel that um, the beautiful cutback by Odeka to Martinelli, I know it was left foot first time, but, you know, someone to just pounce upon that chance and slot that in. Uh, I do think Trossard is our best finisher, uh, but he does look uh, sometimes, you know, a little heavy with his touch and even even towards the dying moments of the game when we took that free kick and then, you know, everyone was up top in the box and, um, you know, he uh, he fouled um, the player right at the edge of the box. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you're a Pokemon guy. So I think somewhere there was Bayern used stun spore on Arsenal in the second half because I just feel for some reason that impetus was lacking. Uh, I also feel that being a system manager is all well and good, but yeah, when you're against the likes of Tuchel and Emery, who are who have the nows and who are seasoned, uh, you know, cup managers, I think that you really do need a plan B, because otherwise, uh, uh, you know, your uh, your system can be to your detriment. And you know, we saw that. We saw the result of which. But yeah, I also just would like to. I don't know. Maybe end with the with the thought that. Go on. Um, thought. Of course, yeah. we love our players and. Sorry, please go on. No, 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 no. Go for it. So I was, I was, you, I, I, I interrupted. Carry on. Your final thought. You <laughs> yeah. No, I was just saying that. I was just saying that. Uh, as much as we love our players, I think it's it's evident that even, of course, the mentality uh, will come with time. You, you know, you grow through what you go through. But I, I think that uh, even personnel-wise, we're still not there. We're still not. Um, and I'm not just talking on paper because, of course. That would anyway point towards Bayern, but I just mean uh, there there are certain positions where I feel we definitely need um, uh, some reinforcements next summer. So yes, I did hear you say that we uh, must give Arteta another budget and uh, uh, give him um, you know have him throw the the kitchen sink at it in terms of next season signings. I think if we can get a world class uh, right winger like a 
Pedro Neto uh, say from from Wolves um, if if we can get a, a strong holding midfielder and then a gunman um, Isaac Tony Boniface um, you know let's have at it and, and I, I really think that we can we can have a crack at it next season okay Laurie just wants to end with a final question yeah just very quickly yeah. and I'm digressing a little bit but I'm interested to hear your thoughts can we bounce back there's six games left yeah um, right to ask that can question. we bounce back can we win the title or at least make a you know I mean a positive go of it to the end of the season or, or have we imp- are we starting yeah to I, I don't I don't want to get into uh, mathematics because you know this whole it's uh, you know, possible. Um, it's not over till it's over. It's sure, but I, I do think we can. Um, we definitely can do it if uh, Man City draw one of their game away games. Um, I'm looking at Spurs away, especially. They've been a bit, bit of a boogie team for City uh, in recent times. I think Brighton can also spring up a surprise, and I think that one blessing in disguise possibly is for us to have these quick uh, back-to-back games and if we can just get those six points against Wolves and Chelsea then I think we're right back in it and I think we can do it let's see a night of drama that's all Arsenal go out against Bayern Munich and Real Madrid knock out Man City as well what impact will City uh, face you know from that uh, exit as well mate always a great call thank you so much for joining appreciate it Um, and we'll chat soon thank you guys thank you for having me thank you take care Thanks. thanks for the call I just said he was always a great call and actually it's the first time I chatted to him so that tells you how tired oh, right, I am right, right, um, okay. but he was a great call yeah, I've spoken um, to him everyone we're gonna I'm gonna leave it there Trotter says title still possible and it is I think it is but what scares me is this team's bounce back ability we're not doing it quickly enough let me just go through some super chats very quickly that we uh well, we've got a couple missed. of days now. I would imagine they'll rest for a few days. And then uh, Friday, they'll be back at the training ground uh, working on a game plan for the game of the weekend, which is now like, <laughs> that is massive. absolutely massive. He massive. Man says, uh, Arteta's single biggest mistake was selling Martinez. Martinez, is that right? Interesting. Um, the African sci-fi scholar says I agree with your comment earlier James on Arteta his in-game adjustments and analysis seem poor and late but if Man City didn't exist he would be the best manager in England two years in a row maybe but I no, maybe uh, today's laugh sends it a super chat thank you very much but I'm not totally disputing with what uh, I think it was African sci-fi scholar said there it's just I don't think you could just go, well, without Pep, Arteta would be the best. There'd be another manager in there. Other managers have won the title with Man City. You don't know what that would have done for Klopp and Liverpool. Uh, of course, I think we have a better chance of winning the league without Pep Guardiola. But uh, Coins Cove says Arteta will never get us over the line. Thoughts? No, Arteta, I'm so confident we'll get over the line as a manager. It's about whether it's with Arsenal. He is a young manager who's done a lot in his first full, four full seasons as a coach. Now let's see how he does well, next season because he'll be our manager next season. Oh, very But right, I, I think right, in, right. you know, I think in, let's just jump forward 10 years, whether he's still with us, whether he's moved on to Barcelona, to PSG, wherever. He'll have won trophies and had success with clubs. I'm, I'm confident of that. Uh, Lee Jacob says, I will say one thing. The team that started against Villa should have started tonight and vice versa. Bayern was the perfect team for Jesus. Saw it in the first day. We've taken great strides as a club, but it's time to get over the line now. Lee, that might be a really good point, you know. He also said Saka hasn't been managed well enough. He needs competition. Mikel clearly lacks experience with rotation and game management. It will keep costing us. I don't think he can take us to the next level. Nathan Piper says 18-man squad value to prevent tired legs. So the 18-man squad values to prevent tired legs end of the season and free play out of tactics from individuals at times is key to next season. Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say there. Um, uh, the African sci-fi scholar comes with another one. He says, uh, if I'm coaching against Arsenal, I know there will be 3-4-4 four, four, and the left-back will invert. If I'm coaching against Man City, I have no idea what's coming. Yeah, I made that point as well on FCM podcast that there is a predictability about Arsenal that you don't really have with Man City. Uh, and and who's fault would that be? That's it. What's that? And who is that down to? Arteta for me. Mm. And, and recruitment. Everyone, season's not over yet. I refuse to roll down and die for Man City. We have to keep pushing them to the end. We have to hope for an error. 
and we are we are capable of winning our last four get uh, six games but this team need to show a stronger mentality who knows how uh, last few seasons how going out in the champions league is going to affect man city as well i mean listen yeah absolutely i would imagine even though it was on penalties i would imagine that still it was at home in well, front of hurts, the fans. it's going to hurt them yeah yeah um they could be similar. I mean, I know they got the FA Cup this weekend to think about. That might be a distraction that um, helps them in a way. Yeah. Because uh, they don't go straight into a league game. But listen, yeah. you never know with football, man. It's, yeah, uh, it's the gift that keeps giving. Absolutely. Uh, we got an opportunity this weekend to try and put things right. I think if we're all being honest deep down, we are more likely to win the Premier League than the Champions League. Am I, am I getting that wrong? I mean, t put your disappointments to one at side the for time, one second. Y yeah, at the I time. always felt that the, the Premier League is more achievable than the than the Champions League. I don't know. Because I, I just thought that our record in Europe over the years has not been good. You know, I mean, we've only just started playing Champions League football again. There's been there's teams in there, man, that are in this competition year in, year out. It's a nuanced type of football. Um, and, and they've got far more. I mean, look at Man City, who for me are the best club side in the world currently. It took them years to win the Champions League. No, no, with I all know. their money, yeah. with all their players, with the best manager in the world, and it st t still took them time. For me, going out at the quarterfinal stage is no shame for Arsenal. What's disappointing is the way we went out tonight okay, against a team that, let's be honest, um, they didn't outclass us tonight. Yeah, We could really and should really have beaten them. Yeah. We didn't take our chance in the first half. In the second half, we were flat and that's what's this point. I know two late Super Chats are coming so I'll quickly address them. Lee says Arsene Wenger would have won the league with this squad last season and this season. Man made top four with Mertzak and Mustafi experience and coaches show. Lee, with all due respect, I think he might have won a cup competition with this group um, but we wouldn't have this group if Wenger was still there. He didn't value the power and strength of midfielders he went years without not signing a six Arteta signed Jorginho Partey and Rice in the time he's arrived so I, I, I disagreed I, Wenger with his same group I don't know what he'd do but he might he might have won it all but he I don't think he'd have built this group Josh says just tuned in I know you've said it differently James but Rice needs to stay at six and buy a right footed eight this summer love Rice but need more up front Josh totally and utterly agree everyone we're going to round it off there Disappointment, 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 disappointment. That's those are my words for the last three games. But um, we can't roll over and die for Man City. So let's all sulk tonight and tomorrow. That team need to get back at it and they need to fix that mentality quick. Cause three games without a win isn't isn't good enough. All right, everyone, catch you on a bit. Thank you to the callers who make the show. Appreciate you all tuning in and uh, check out the content coming out tomorrow as well. Catch you in a bit. <laughs>